if you got any trouble with uh, running through the algorithm, you can either rewatch the video. I believe I cover every single detail that you should know, or you can actually uh, get in touch with me. Okay, either way. Let me now go back to uh, this method here. I will still leave uh, return now as the last line over here. So now the step I'm going to follow will be very similar. And I'll use the same variable name. Integer counter is equal to zero, right? So this will be the number of products satisfying the search criteria. Okay, so that'll be the first one. And then we also got integer array for indices, right? Indices will be new and what should be the maximum size, the worst case, where all the products satisfy the search criteria. This is the IDOE. I already explained that. So this will be indices uh, into the entries array that, uh, okay, how about this? Indices of entry objects in the entries array that satisfy the search criteria, okay? So we're gonna collect all the indices for those entry objects that are in the entries array and entries array are the uh, RS entries, And we want to collect those that set, uh, satisfy the search criteria, okay? Okay, after this, we're going to get a uh, write some loop. Okay, step number one, collect all products satisfying the search criteria. Okay, let's see how we do this. Basically, we want to actually got we want to have this particular indices array. That's what we want to get. Once we get it, we'll go move on to step two to copy this somehow into uh, serial numbers. That's what we want to get. Okay, let's take a look. So we're gonna go over the entries array. Integer i initialize to be zero, and then i strictly less than this dot noe, and also i plus plus. Okay, and then let's now, okay. So you, you should be pretty much uh, familiar with uh, this pattern over here already. So hopefully uh, I don't need to go uh, too slow, okay? Integer i, I forgot, right? Of course. And then I would say, so which products are we looking at for each iteration? I would say products p will be this the entries at loop counter i position, right? So that'll be the current one I'm looking at. In case uh, i is actually equal to zero, in that case, I'll go for zero and then I'm, I'm looking at this particular entry. If I want to get its product, I'll say dot get products. Okay. Entries dot get products over here. And then I want to make sure that uh, I only collect those that will satisfy the uh, search criteria. What are they? Okay. One thing I want to draw your attention to, okay? Uh, two things I want to emphasize right away, okay? Number one, for this algorithm I just presented, it actually is also explained in the written notes that I uh, refer you to, right? So this written notes, I already t told you how to find it, okay? You want to look into the accessor methods, get points in Crojan 1. So that's the one I told you to look at for the written notes and also for the slides. Please take a look if you got any trouble, okay? And then I want you to go to Java API, the string class. If you go there, there's one single method I would like to use uh, for this example. If you go there, I want you to look, so you, you should have learned about how to look up the API from the uh, first year. So if you got any trouble, you can let me know, but I want you to go to a particular method for the string class called contains over here, okay? Contains. So this one is make, uh, trying to search for in a string if uh, another string is a substring of that, right? So for example, if I got here, this is my model name, iPad Pro. If I want to check to see whether it's a pro or not, I can simply try to search if pro is actually a substring, is actually contained in this particular string. In this case, it is, pro is here. In this case, it is not contained in there. In this case, pro is also contained in the middle. So, right? so, so that's an easy way to, uh, to check to see if uh, the first search criterion is actually satisfied, okay? So I would say if P, the products I'm looking at, the get model, which is a string, and the contains, not equals, right? Because I want to make sure it's actually a pro, okay? 
you can either put uh, iPad Pro or Pro. I think uh, either way is okay. I mean, let me put the Pro. And since we are talking about either this or this, so what will be the operator for a logical disjunction? It should be vertical bar, vertical bar. That's also something you're supposed to review from the first year. Either this or it's finished. So like, let's say p.get finish dot equals over here should be space gray. You can see in this case, we just want to check to see if pro is actually part of the model name. And here we are, we are making sure the entire finished name should be space gray, right? That's why we're using different methods here. Okay, and then if it is the case, that means we have to, so the next two lines I'm gonna write will be very similar to these two lines that I used to write before, right? That's a very standard programming pattern. I want to increment uh, the counter, whereas I want to store something into the array. So that's, uh, if you under have the correct understanding about these two lines from the earlier video, then now you should have no trouble, right? I'm just, uh, it's just that the context now is in the local array inside the method, rather than the global attributes in the class, okay? Let me go back here. So I'll simply say the indices array should be updated on the count, right? Remember there are two purposes for the count. And purpose number two, count will suggest what will be the next index into indices to store the next index. That should be assigned to, since I'm currently for the iteration, i, right? So that'll be, i will be the index for me to look at, right? And then also count should be plus plus. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to uh, store the new index in the correct position. That's why count plus plus is analogous to the NOE plus plus from the earlier line over here. Uh, exactly over here. Okay. All right, so that's about step number one. Okay, and then let's now do step number two. We want to allocate space for this particular serial number. Okay, over here. But what should be the size for the serial numbers? Since we already kept, uh, we already tried, uh, we already kept uh, a record of how many products that actually have satisfied the criteria so that we collected their indices, right? So now we got two. So that means correspondingly, serial numbers should have the size two. Okay, so now I want to draw, uh, uh, make one more note over here. Okay, so serial numbers over here. Oh, here. The length of that should be equal to the count. Okay, that's also very important for you to notice. Okay, let me go back there and then I would say step number two, create an array of strings for serial numbers whose size is count. Meaning that it's gonna correspond to the number of products which satisfy the search criteria. I'm gonna say string array serial numbers is assigned to new string array and should be exactly count. That's step number two. And step number three is to patternize the kind of assignments I did and explain over here, right? So how do we do that? Okay, we're gonna go over uh, the uh, value uh, specify, uh, indicated by count because count will tell us how many uh, products have been uh, have satisfied the uh, criteria. Integer i, zero, and then i strictly less than count. Pretty much like a strictly less than NOE, analogous, right? They are similar. Okay, so now what should we do? We should do exactly what I did before. That's why I try to explain to you in a high level. Serial numbers i, right? The current iteration index, and then should be assigned to over here, this dot entries over here. But now, a very common mistake is you simply say over here, just say i. It's not gonna work because i will not give you the valid index into the entries. What you want to do is you want to use i to index into the indices array, which will give you some value that can, uh, that denotes somewhere in the entries array. So that's the way to go. So you really want to think about think uh, think uh, think through uh, these uh, critical steps. Indices i over here, and then dot get serial number, right? Okay, eventually, rather than returning now, we're gonna return serial numbers over here. All right, so that's about this uh, implementation here. So you can see a very promising approach to problems that you find challenging is always think about some visual illustration about the object structure, and then think about some concrete steps for solving them. And then from there, you can work out exactly what to put onto the uh, 
body of the implementation for the method. That would be something I suggest you do. Okay? Not necessarily for every method. If you're very confident to go coding right away, go ahead. But if you really get stuck, at least you can follow this promising approach to make some progress.